everybody, Dave Brown here at ringside with all these folks ready to go with another day of USWA Championship Wrestling. Today, the fabulous ones are going to be here. They'll be right here in the ring a little bit later on. Also, we will have the new kids in in a tag team match a little bit later on. The King, Jerry Lawler, will be along, too. We'll have uh, a couple of special announcements coming up. Many, many, uh, or several matches coming up uh, today. Danny Davis is scheduled to be here. I see Eddie Marlin coming this way. Before I tell you more, let's uh, see what Eddie's got. Eddie? Dave, I won't take but a minute of time, but I've got a real strange phone call this past week. It was from Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert, and he stated that he had left the USWA. I don't know why he didn't give a reason, and that he would not be back. So I just wanted all the fans and then you and everybody involved. Before you leave, what does that do to the Southern uh, title? Well, that's the first thing I thought about. And we're, this week, we're putting together a one-night tournament to have a new champion. Oh, okay. Only well, this week. That is kind of strange. That's true. I guess maybe that bounty got to him there, huh? Well, interesting. So we'll try to get more details on, uh, on the tournament coming up a little bit later on. Let's take a quick break, and then we'll be back here with Action in the Ring in just a moment. Stay with us. Tag team that all uh, wrestling fans around this area are very, very familiar with. Of course, the fabulous ones. They uh, at one time said they would uh, never be back together. They won belts around here. They held the championships. They left this area. They were with other tag teams. Uh, between them, they held world titles all around. They were reunited just a few weeks ago right here in the USWA. And they wasted no time in winning world belts once again. The USWA World Tag Team Champions the fabulous ones and take a look right here at how it happened. Stan Lane, Steve Carney and fire and Tony Anthony off into the ropes. High double backdrop. Stan Lane pulling Tony Anthony out to the center of the ring. Takes him down. As Dirty Doug Gilbert looking on, worried about his tag team partner. As the titles are on the line, Stan Lane fires Tony Anthony out of the ring, out onto the floor. Running him into the railing around the ring. Jim Cornette over with the tennis racket. Right across the back of Tony Anthony. White Boy shoves Lane off. Lane up and over. Nails Gilbert. Kick to the midsection of White Boy. Thrust chop to the throat. Little double teaming from the champs. Who seem to have a little bit of renewed fire here. Trying to wedge an arm down for some leverage. Gets his arm down and reverse atomic drop. Stan Lane is out of the hold, but nowhere close to getting a tag. Look at Cornette over there saying, Lane, the other way. Come on, Stan. Get over there to Kern. He's on one knee, but Dougie gets dirty white boy. And Lane has the tag on Kern. Steve Kern comes in on both of them. Doug Gilbert, dirty white boy, flying all around the ring. Steve Kern is mad and fired up. Look at him slug away on him. Steve Kern over in the corner on Tony Anthony. Doug Gilbert coming in from behind, nailing him in the back of the head. Holding him up. Tony Anthony firing away. Stan Lane in to help him out. Catches Doug Gilbert with a kick. Two, three. That's going to be it. The fabulous one. The new USWA World Tag Team Champions. Lane, Steve Kern. Jim Cornette has just presented them with the belts. Well, the fabulous ones certainly had their act together tonight. In the ring right now, Bill Rush and Sergeant O'Reilly, but I hear the music and here they come. Stan and Steve, the fabulous ones. Jimmy Cornette, their manager. Jimmy's got his tennis racket with him. And, uh, but man, I still think 
looks like they are set to go. They got those world titles around their waist. Here's Jimmy Cornett right here. Hey, Dave, keep a hold of this for a second. I got a special surprise for you later on today. We're going to call Jackie Fargo on the phone. Just keep a hold of it. Hey, all right, very good. We'll hang on to the telephone. Be looking forward to hearing the fabulous one himself, the original fan. A little bit later on. In the ring right now, the champions. Looking forward to this one. Our first look at them on uh, USWA Championship Wrestling since they have won those world tag titles. P.D. Steele is going to be the referee here today. The world Tag belts are handed out of the ring for safekeeping. And the, uh, the warm-up attire out of there, too. And as soon as uh, TD finishes the inspection, well, he's going through the full inspection with, uh, with the Fabs. As, as soon as he's ready and gives us a signal, we'll be ready to go. Here we go. We're underway. Stan and Steve, the fabulous one. Stan Lane starting out for the Fabs. Sergeant O'Reilly jumped over the back. Jimmy Cornett cheering over there. He likes what he's seeing from his team. Very early in the match. But already the fabulous one's taking complete charge against Sergeant O'Reilly. There's a tag, and here comes Gator Steve Kern in. Whoa! Down to the bat goes Sergeant O'Reilly. O'Reilly up in the air. Body slam. Steve Kerr. Oh, puts down on him. Steve, oh, nails him with a forearm. Sergeant O'Reilly not having a good day so far. There's a cover. Count of one, two. Oh, only a two count. O'Reilly kicks out of it. O'Reilly rammed into the knee of Stan Lane back in the corner. Fabulous one. Make an exchange here. O'Reilly is over near the corner, and he makes a tag on Bill Rush. Bill Rush comes in. I don't know what he said to, to uh, Stan, but he better, he better watch what he says to him, let me tell you. Stan Lane. Look at him go. Picks him up in the air. Bill Rush spun around halfway, and then Stan Lane jumps him on the mat. Steve Kern in after the tag. Stan holding Rush up. Steve Kern taking care of business. Bill Rush's head slammed into the turnbuckle. He turned out of the corner, and then all of a sudden, dropped to the mat. Up in the air, Bill Rush. Steve dropping him across the knee a couple of times with a backbreaker. There he goes again. Finally, he just deposits him right in the middle of the ring. Over to the corner, and here comes Stan. Fabulous ones in complete control. The world champions handling their opponents with ease so far in this match today. We're about two and a half minutes into the action. Here's Sergeant O'Reilly back in. Rush was able to get to the corner. Oh, O'Reilly grabbed Stan's foot. He thought he had him. He was laughing. Bad mistake. Stan, very agile. Kicked him in the head, is what he did. There is Steve. Boy, he met him coming off those ropes. Drags him out to the center of the ring so he can't get a foot on the rope. Count is at one, two. D.D. Steele counts to three, and this one is over. The fabulous ones with a victory here today. Stanley, Steve Kern, their hands raised. Jimmy Cornette celebrating with a tennis racket back in the corner. Here comes the king out right here. Let's uh, get him around and have a comment perhaps about uh, the fabulous ones and their winning of the world championship just in recent days. Stan, good to see you. Congratulations, Jimmy. You got them looking good there, King. They looking mighty good, let me tell you. It's just Jerry, Steve. Don't worry about it. Hey, guys. King, it's good to see you again. I just want to say one thing real quick. I'm going to let Stan and Steve talk. I want to say the Fabs are back, and it's great to be back. And, brother, we're going to make sure that we watch Jerry Lawler's back. As a matter of fact, while they talk, I'm going to go over here and watch his back right now make sure nothing happens. <laughs> Jimmy Cornett. You know, it is a pleasure to have these guys back in the area, and, and uh, one thing that's a pleasure to know of is the fact that, uh, as Eddie Marlin said, it looks... Pick him up! Pick what? him up! Come on, pick him up! What are you doing? Pick him up! Pick him up! Come on, Jack! Come on! Get up! Get up, big guy! Get up! Get up! Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Come on! 
don't believe what's happening here. What's that? It's supposed to... Uh oh. Oh. Come on, here. Oh, no. And they dropped Jerry with a pile drive. They jumped him from behind. He's supposed to be out of here watching his back, not kicking him in the back. Barnett. What's the matter, Dave? Huh? I, What's the matter? You know what? I can't I believe, I can't believe what I've just record. seen. <laughs> Barnett, you're supposed to be out here watching his back. What, what's going on? I watched you? his back. I kept my eye on it the whole time. Look at this. I'm going to sue this guy for ruining a perfectly good tennis racket. <laughs> what? Here, let me tell you. Let Just get that microphone over here. Let me tell you something. Now, you see, the reason for all this is when Jerry Lawler first called us, said the Memphis Mafia is running roughshod. Need somebody to help me come in here and clean up the area. Now, the first thing on our minds was, number one, we don't care what happens in this stinking part of the country to begin with. Number two, why should we fight somebody else's fight? But you see, when we heard about that $50,000 bounty, things got a whole lot clearer. Oh. Now, we knew, we realized that Jerry Lawler's too tough and too smart. We couldn't come in here and say, hey, we're going to collect the bounty king, we're going to wrestle you face to face, and we're going to take you out. No, no. We had to get Jerry Lawler in a position where he trusted us, where he believed in us. And besides that, we realized that with the Memphis Mafia running around, there was a chance that they would collect the bounty before we got to it. So we had to keep the Memphis Mafia busy, and at the same time, we had to get Jerry Lawler in a position where he trusted us. Now, you know, <laughs> everybody's wondering what happened to Eddie Gilbert. Well, there was a $50,000 bounty on his head, too. So you see, at the, at the arena down there, myself and Stan Lane and Steve Kern, we just marched right over to that dressing room, and we knocked on the door, and when Eddie Gilbert opened it, there was Stan Lane and Steve Kern standing there. And Stan, you, you, you phrased that offer so beautifully. Ex exactly how did that go? You know, so I went in there and I said, uh, Eddie, you know, listen, I've known you for a long time. We can do this one of two ways. Either you can pack your bag right now and head out that door and head out of this area and out of professional wrestling for good, or... The Fabs can take your leg and put it across those two chairs in his dressing room and snap your kneecap like a dry twig. What's it going to be, Eddie? <laughs> well, he just moped on over there, packed his bag, and you don't see him, do you? You know, Eddie Gilbert's a smart man. He realized the right way out, but we knew that we couldn't make the same offer to Lawler and expect any success. That's why what you just saw happened. And now, if you'll excuse me, Dave, where's that telephone I brought out here? Hold on here a second. There it is. I got a little phone uh, call Jackie is not going to be happy to hear about this. Like, I don't care well, what you I think. Can give a, tell what Jackie, Jackie has to say. <laughs> Hold on. It's ringing. It's ringing. Hey, look like you've been having some margarine. It's ringing. Hold on. Terry? Terry, Jim Cornette, how you doing? Terry. Been? Yeah, Terry, shut up. I'm on long distance. Yes, two out of two, baby. $100,000. Can, can you make it a certified check? Okay, that'll be, you sure? I'm sure. He's gone. He's finished. Kaput. He's vapor. He's in the archives. Wait, wait a minute. But, two wait, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, Jerry. It may be one, hey. but listen, I've seen Jerry Lawler down before, and he's already got, he's always got up. He came through that door, and the only thing he was hollering, I'll get him, I'll get him, I'll get him. Hey, he you. said he was all big. Him, he? he wasn't hollering nothing except ambulance, ambulance. Let me tell you something, Methuselah. You get out of my face before you have a heart attack or we cause one. I'm on long distance. I'm getting $100,000. Well, you're lying on long distance because there's not two out of two. You may have run Eddie Gilbert out of there. I'll call you back. I'll call you back. You certainly hadn't run Jerry Law out of the out there. All he wants is a partner, and he'll get a partner, and he'll be there looking you straight in the eye this week, and you can count on it. He ain't, hey, bring it on. He ain't gonna be looking nothing straight in the eye because both his eyes are closed. Steve, uh, what deep, do you think? Deep pocket, short fingers, Eddie Marlin, he's hot, huh? Let me tell you something. You probably were least expecting that out of me, opposed to these two guys. Well, let's date back two years ago, Jerry the King Lawler, when I went in as your partner and was your best of palsy wowsy and you set me on fire did you forget it i didn't forget it i've been waiting a long time for this and to get paid fifty thousand dollars for doing it thank you very much a nice christmas present let me bring this whole thing to a squeaking halt jay lawler let me tell you something eddie marlin and the rest of you geeks around here and a bunch of rednecks if you get in that ring against the fabulous ones this week or any other time jerry the king lawler 
This ain't the same Jim Cornette that you used to make fun of around here eight years ago. I've been playing with the big boys for years, and I know exactly what to do. And the fabulous ones are not the kind of jerks you used to beating up on around here. Together and separate, they've held every title, every world title, beat all the top contenders from top to bottom in every alliance all across the country. What I'm saying to you, Jerry Lawler, is you get in that ring again with the fabulous ones, Brother, you're going to get dropped on your head one more time. You're going to be out of professional wrestling. We're not going to be $50,000 ahead. We're going to be $100,000 ahead. And if you don't think, Jerry Lawler, that there's anything in this world we won't do for $100,000, you bet your life on it, because that's exactly what you're doing, betting your life. Get in the ring. Find out. I think you've just proved that you guys will do anything here. for a fifty dollars or $100,000. Yeah, take your phone. You may want to call Terry Funk or... Terry, whoever that was you were talking to there about the money there, the fabulous ones, turning on Lawler, obviously for the money, and they make no bones about it. That's just what they said. We'll be back here in a moment. Well, we're back out here about ready to go. And this uh, downtown Bruno arrived with shouts of weasel ringing in his ears a moment ago. Hey, you're going to get these people started already? I am not a weasel, Dave. I'm started when you step through the door there. Terrence Garvin out here right now. You're in Garvin's corner. We would uh, appreciate your being there and not uh, over here by the desk, if you don't mind. Freezer Thompson is going to be going against Terry Garvin. T.D. Steele, special referee today, is uh, checking him out. And T.D. says, let's go, and we are underway. And Terry's fixing to go. Let me tell you something, Dave Brown. When I got the downtown connection back together here in the USWA, I went and got me the best wrestler I could find. Now I'm talking about the master technician, the master wrestler, the human chess master. I'm talking about Terry Garvin. There isn't anybody in the USWA that Terry Garvin can't defeat. That includes Jeff Jarrett. Bill Dundee, Jerry Lawler, Jerry Lynn. You know, the list goes on and on. The new kid, Terry Garvin, is without a doubt the finest technician, the finest professional wrestler or athlete that downtown Bruno has ever represented. And I am very proud to be associated with the man from Dallas, Texas, Terry Garvin. He is without a doubt the best, Dave. Terry Garvin is uh, certainly a wrestler to be contended with. There is no doubt about it. He uses tactics we don't like to see. Having you in his corner is not necessarily a plus in the, most of the fans' mind. Hey, says you. But we'll see what he does here against Freezer Thompson. Freezer tried to roll out of the way. Garvin caught him across the back of the he deck. He sure did. You can't get one over on Terry Garvin. The man's four steps ahead of you, four steps ahead of everybody else, Dave Brown. The man is the best, and he's destined to have silver and gold in his future. I'm talking about championship belts, baby. We're looking forward to Southern Championships, World Championships, any championship title, tournament, anything you want to mention. Terry Garvin is right up there in the top, baby. He's going to bring it home to downtown Bruno. Terry Terry Garvin, downtown Bruno, USWA, and championship. Those four things right there are all synonymous, baby. They all belong together. The best, right up there on top of the mountain, baby. Terry Garvin, right here. He's going to put a knot on Freezer's head. So big, that snow's going to be on top of it. You know what I'm talking about, baby? Well, I can tell you what, Terrence Garvin at downtown Bruno and the downtown connection may not have long to wait to see if they've got uh, championship caliber with uh, uh, Terrence Garvin here. Because as Eddie Marlin announced earlier today, there is a big tournament coming up due to a vacated Southern heavyweight title. Yeah, Dave, all these idiotic, goofy-looking, ugly people out here sitting in this audience here and all over the world watching on television you got to realize one thing. They're going to see Terry Garvin become the new Southern heavyweight champion. They're going to see downtown Bruno walking right beside him, showing everybody the silver and gold. And they're going to realize they're going to see the best professional wrestling has to offer. I'm talking about Terry Garvin, the number one man in the USWA today. And pretty soon we will have the silver and gold belt to prove it, Dave Brown. Well, we'll see. Terry Garvin. Whoa! Got outsmarted that time by Freezer Thompson. There he goes again. Boy, you know, you would think uh, Garvin would have learned after the first time, but he didn't. Freezer Thompson puts him into the ropes. Whoa, Garvin. Back to the ropes again this time. Beautiful bulldog version, baby. Beautiful. That's a master technician right there. Always three steps ahead of his opponent, Dave. And that's the difference. Wait, wait a minute. Freezer. He was four steps ahead a few minutes ago. He's lost a step here in the last three minutes. Oh, now we're getting into semantics, Dave. Look at that. The sleeping beauty. That's all she wrote. I guarantee it. Good night, Irene. The party's over. Oh, you're right. It's over. Count of three. 
Barry Garvin gets the victory over Freezer Thompson, and uh, it's a victory for Garvin here. Who do you think Pete Rose bet on right there? I'm sure he was betting on Garvin. Don't you think, Terry? Pete Rose bet on you, didn't he? Pete Rose always bets on Terry Garvin. Dave Brown, did you see that? I just manhandled a guy 600 pounds. I beat him to death, Dave Brown. That's because Terry Garvin is back. And he's in the USWA, and he's got one thing in mind. That's that southern heavyweight belt. It's going to look so good around my waist. And I'm still pretty, but I can't help that, Dave Brown. Terry Garvin, downtown Bruno. Or say they're, champion, they're, well, he's not the champion yet. He beat Freezer Thompson here today, but he's not the champion. He'll have to win that on his own in the ring later on. Terrence Garvin, the winner of the match here today, though. We'll take a break. We'll be back. We've got more to come from the USWA. Just a bit. Get well soon, all right? We've got uh, big action coming up Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum, uh, and uh, there is a student special this night. All school-age students admitted to general admission for only $2. So the big student special coming up Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. 7.30 is the corner. Now, you heard Bruno out here talking about Terry Garvin, how he was going to be the next Southern champion and all of that. Well, he's got to get past Chris Champion first. And Wildside is a formidable wrestler himself, let me tell you. As he goes against Terry Garvin, and downtown Bruno will be in Garvin's corner in that single match. Dirty White Boy will be going against Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn, we got our first look at uh, just a couple of weeks ago here on Championship Wrestling. He'll be along a little bit later on today, too, and he will be going Monday night against Tony Anthony, the Dirty White Boy. Special Lumberjack strap match rules in effect for this next one. Going to have uh, Lumberjacks around the ring, but this time those Lumberjacks are going to be fans. So folks from the audience are going to be there, and they're going to have uh, the means to keep them in the ring. They will uh, they'll uh, have those uh, belts with them, and uh, one of these wrestlers gets out of the ring. The fans will say, hey, back in there. Danny Davis goes against Joseph Magliano. Special Lumberjack strap match rules, and again, the fans are going to be the Lumberjacks this time around. Primetime Brian Lee will be in uh, with downtown Bruno to go against Cody Michaels. Cody Michaels really looking good in his appearances in the USWA, going against the very big and very rugged primetime Brian Lee. Then a one-night tournament to crown the Southern Heavyweight Champion. Eddie Marlin told you about this a little bit earlier. Don't know all the details, but here comes Eddie right here, maybe to fill us in. 11 matches in all, I see, and the first round pairing, uh, Eddie? Well, you can make it plus one match, 11 plus one, because we'll have the tournament for the belt. And then after that's over, Jerry the King Lawler has picked Bill Superstar Dundee, and they will match will be added. Lawler and Dundee against the Fabulous Ones. That'll be added this week. All right. Very good. We'll have the complete card plus the added grudge match. Okay. Very, very good. An added match. Lawler and Dundee been here to try to get even for what the Fabs and Cornette did to him. I think funny what the Fabs well, wasn't Cornette. funny at all. I think it's great because I don't like Lawler anyway. And anybody that does any damage to Lawler is all right with me. Believe me, Dave, bro. I yeah. think it's great. Well, yeah. you you are here with the Memphis Mafia, the ex-world sure champions. You Doug know, Gilbert. Dave Brown, getting to that, you know, I hope Jerry Lawler can find him a good partner if he wants to wrestle them fabulous ones Monday night right here in Memphis, Tennessee. So they can all get in there and kill each other because we want our world belt. That's, that's, it, baby, that's it. You know, Monday night's going to start a big tournament. Well, everybody knows the last time they had a tournament for the Southern Heavyweight title, the Dirty White Boy went all the way from top to the bottom and I beat everybody. I walked out the, war, the new champion. <laughs> and that's what I intend to do Monday night. But, Stan and Steve, let me tell you boys something. What you did out here just a few minutes ago, that don't change one thing with the Memphis Mafia, baby, because you've got something that we want, and that's those world tag team titles, and you can bet your bottom dollar, Jack, that before it's all over with, we will walk out with those titles once again. World champions. Well, we'll, we'll see. You don't have the belts right now. Uh, the fabulous ones do have the belts. Uh, here, here's Eddie again. Dave, I failed to mention a while ago, the first matches on the card will be the first round pairings, and then the one will go on, the one will go on until we got one winner, and he will be the champion, and then the big one. 
the Fabs against Lawland. And okay, so the one-night tournament for the Southern Heavyweight title, first-round pairings, and then it progresses that night. A champion, a new Southern Heavyweight champion will be crowned, and then following the crowning of the Southern Heavyweight champion, then this grudge match is going to occur here. Uh, Dundee has uh, agreed to be the partner of the King, Jerry Lawler, to go against the fabulous ones, Stan and Steve, and Jimmy Cornette in their corner, too. So that is the action that's coming up. Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. Remember, 7.30 is when it all began. Student special that night. All students will be admitted to general admission for $2. We'll take a break, and we'll be back with more when we return. <laughs> happened here a few moments ago with the fabulous ones. Going to be talking about the fabulous ones. You can also leave messages for the King. Call the King's hotline, 1-900-654-5464. Remember, it's 1-900-654-KING, or... 1-900-654-5464, Jerry Lawler's hotline. You can call and leave a message for the king and find out exactly what is, uh, what is going on. So that is that number. Keep it in mind. Right now, we've got a match uh, schedule. Coming up into uh, the wrestling area right now, Michael Green. He is going to be going against Danny Davis. Nightmare Danny Davis will be headed this way very shortly. Here comes referee T.D. Steele, our special referee today. Well, he's all decked out in a... Uh, in a white shirt and tie and uh, looking mighty good there as TD as a special referee and so far must say doing a real good job hey there is Danny Davis right there he steps up onto the ring apron and through the ropes we are just about ready to go with a one fall 10 minute time limit match Michael Green going against Danny Davis don't know much about Michael Green but we'll find out together as we watch him right here battle one of the uh, tough tough veterans in the USWA T.D. Steele, the referee, says, ring the bell. Here we go. Michael Green, a little bit taller than Danny Davis. Weight-wise, Danny uh, will be about the same weight as Michael Green. They tie it up in the middle of the ring again. Danny Davis takes him down to the mat. Michael Green battling to keep from having those shoulders pinned, and he is back on his feet, but Danny Davis with that left arm up in the hammer position. Michael Green uses the opportunity to get over to the ropes, put a foot outside. That's a smart move. It's a good way to get a break from your opponent. Danny Davis breaks it cleanly. Now they tie it up again. Danny, round behind, spins around, and ends up with the advantage. Michael Green. Boy, things going on all around him here. Got to be wondering what happened there. D.D. Steele climbed in between them there and said, hey, break it up in the corner. Danny Davis, that was an open hand. He did not hit him with a fist. That's perfectly legal. Don't double up the fist, but you can hit him with that open hand. Michael Green back up on his feet. Whoa, in the air. Danny Davis drops him across the knee with a backbreaker. D.D. Steele around to check to see if Michael Green wanted to give it up on submission. Apparently, he said no. Because the action continues. Oh, Danny Davis snaps that neck. There's a cover. Count of one, two. This one is over. Danny Davis really with not much trouble as he defeats young Michael Green here. Michael Green having a very, very tough day. Here's Danny uh, coming out of the ring. Let me see if I can get around here real quick, and maybe we can... Uh, Maybe we can impose on him. Hello, Dan. How you I, doing? I'll give you a second here to catch your breath, but I'm I did tired. want to catch you. Well, I, I wondered if you uh, would have just a moment to talk to us, maybe about a match coming up. Oh, boy. You know something? I have the dream of a lifetime. This week, I've got Joey Max in a lumberjack strap match. But you know what makes this match so special? Is I'm not going to be the one carrying a strap. You know... I've had a lot of wrestling fans over the years to tell me, you know, I hate that wrestler. I wish I could get my hands on him. Lord, I would give him some of this. Well, you know what? This week, the fans are going to have a chance of a lifetime because they are going to get to participate in my match. Oh, yeah. Now, Joey Mag, I know you're back there crying like a little baby because you are a mama's boy. Looky here, Dave. Here Looky here. Gotcha. Can you? Wait a minute, wait a minute. What? Whose idea was this? This isn't right. It's one thing to have the wrestlers surrounding the ring, but to have your stupid idiot fans surrounding the ring, they'll try to kill me. I hope they do. All I can say is this. I'm going to have eight fans surround that ring. Each one of those wrestling fans are going to have a leather strap. 
And every time you, mama's boy, every time you leave that ring, my fans are going to blister your back, and I'm going to be so happy. <laughs> Dave Brown, I'm no idiot. I know these people won't try to whip Danny Davis. I know they're going to try to hurt me. But, Danny, every time they hurt me, I'm going to come back on you. Yeah, we'll see. Think about that the next time you insult the fans. How about it, Joseph Magliano? We'll be back with more action. Stay with us. Hey, don't forget about, uh, we're on early today, uh, obviously. Thanks for joining us at our special time. This is because of uh, NFL playoff action coming up immediately following us. Miami and Buffalo, a couple of great teams this year coming up a little bit later on. Another quick reminder, the Jerry Lawler Show at its new time, 10.30 tomorrow morning, right here on TV5. Be sure to join us for that. Uh, as we have told you before, a lot of times folks call and say, hey, I would like to have this wrestler or that wrestler make an appearance uh, for my charitable organization or my group, or my group would like to sponsor Championship Wrestling as a fundraiser. How do we go about it? Well, here's the number to call right here. Call Championship Marketing, 1-901-358-2924. Again, it's area code 901-358-2924. That's the Championship Marketing number. It's where they can answer all of your questions and get everything all set up for you there. Action coming up uh, this week, as a matter of fact, in uh, Horn Lake, Mississippi. Uh, well, I beg your pardon. It's coming up Friday, January 25th in Horn Lake, Mississippi at uh, Horn Lake High School. 7.30 is the time at Horn Lake. USWA Wrestling will be there again, and it is on Friday night, January 25th in Horn Lake, Mississippi. Now, action coming up in Jonesboro, Arkansas. It's coming up on Saturday, January 26th. It'll be at the Earl Bell Community Center, 7.30 is the time, on Church Street. Box office will be open that day at 3 o'clock, so you can pick up your tickets in advance for Fan Appreciation Night in Jonesboro. A lucky fan is going to win a wrestling package valued at $100. No purchase necessary, of course. Fans will be selected to be Lumberjacks in Jonesboro, Arkansas, too. And a Lumberjack strap match, Jerry the King Lawler also has been booked for this big night in Jonesboro, Arkansas on Saturday January 26. So make your plans right now if you're anywhere around the Jonesboro area. You're going to want to be at the Euro Bell Community Center that night, January 26. It's a Saturday night in Jonesboro, Arkansas. And don't forget the night before, Friday night the 25th, Horn Lake, Mississippi. We've got some action coming up right here. Eight-man tag team action is scheduled, and we'll be back with it in a moment. The Memphis Mafia has arrived. They are uh, set to go here. Uh, oh. Yeah, hear the music? There they are, the new kids with their partners, Cody Michaels and Jerry Lynn, as they head into action here. Eight-man tag team match. It'll be the Memphis Mafia against the new kids, Brian and Tony, Jerry Lynn, and Cody Michael. Boy, this one should be a good one. You know, poor T.D. Steele. He, uh, he hasn't uh, refereed that much. And here today, he's got to referee an eight-man tag team match. You know, the referees always uh, take a lot of criticism, but... Boy, when you got this many wrestlers in the ring, and you're going to end up a lot of times with all of them in here. All right, Bruno, yeah, I'll keep my eye on those jackets, no doubt about it. When you end up with that many wrestlers around the ring, you're going to have a bunch of them in the ring, and the referee has his day's work cut out for him in this match alone. T.D. Steele, the referee, says ring the bell. And here we go. Cody Michaels starting against the dirty white boy, Tony Anthony. Boy, you got quite a match here with great talent on both sides of the ring. We've said many times we're not fond at all of the tactics of Dirty Duck Gilbert and Dirty White Boy. Look at this. Boy, all of the Memphis Mafia trying to get in there to help out. And Sam Lowe gets a double shot from the new kids. And now Cody Michaels and Sam Lowe rolls out of the ring down on the floor. And he's hanging on to Tony Anthony saying... I think I did pretty good, didn't I, guys? Uh-uh, wrong, Sam. Tony Anthony. Yeah, you didn't look too good in there with that one, uh, Sam Lowe. Tony Anthony grabs Cody Michaels' left arm, puts a twist over over to the corner, and makes a tag on dirty Doug Gilbert. Doug Gilbert and Tony Anthony, of course, former world champions. 
until just recent days when they lost those belts. They don't have the belts, but boy, they are still mean, let me tell you. Jerry Lynn, nice move. Teamwork by Cody Michaels and Jerry Lynn as Jerry came off the rope and dropped on the arm of Doug Gilbert. Doug grabs Jerry Lynn's left arm. Over to the corner of the tag on Joseph Magliano. Joey Mags using a right fist. T.D. Steele can't see it from his vantage point, but yeah, he definitely popped him with a right fist that time. Jerry Lynn, whoa, he hit him with a fist again, and Jerry Lynn hits the mat. Handful of hair used by Tony Anthony, the dirty white boy. Jerry Lynn snapped up into the air and body slammed in the middle of the ring. Downtown Bruno wandering around ringside. He's over in the corner of the Memphis Mafia. Off the ropes comes Jerry Lynn. No, oh, Doug Gilbert picks him up and just dropped him in the middle of the ring. The new kids are over there saying, hey, come on, hang in there, let's go. The new kids so far have not made an official appearance in this match. Maybe we're on to a tactic here by the Memphis Mafia. Try to keep the new kids out of the action. Well, so far, they've been able to do it. Still working on Jerry Lynn. Cody Michael started for this team. Jerry Lynn is in there. Joseph Magliano makes the tag, and the dirty white boy Tony Anthony comes in. They've been pulling hair, a little bit of everything. First ball of action. And an expiration of time match. Jerry Lynn off the rope. Dumped over the back. Dirty white boy over to the corner. Doug Gilbert takes over. Out of the back. And let's see. What, oh, yeah. Doug Gilbert says, I got him. I got him for you, Sam. Come on in and finish him off. Yeah, real nice move there. Sam Lowe now fires him into the ropes. Oh, look out. Jerry Lamb rolls it down. Count of three. Jerry Lynn gets a victory. Fast count? Well, maybe. <laughs> he didn't win. Well, I gotta say, honestly, that uh, T.D. Steele didn't waste any time making that three count, but the count of three fell, and Jerry Lynn definitely had Sam Lowe's shoulders down. What had happened? Doug Gilbert says, hey, I've got it set up for you, Sam. You come on in here, take the pin, and finish him off. Didn't work out that way. A reversal. And the new kids, Jerry Lynn and Cody Michaels, have a victory here in his first fall of an expiration of time match. Here's a special look at none other than Jeff Jarrett right now.
tag team match continues. First fall went to the team of the new kids, Cody Michaels, and getting the pin for that team, Gary Lynn. Here comes T.D. Steele, the referee, and everybody's back. They're ready to go against the Memphis Mafia once again. And the Mafia finds themselves in the unaccustomed position of having to win this one just to be even. Now, they don't win this fall, they lose. Two falls to one. Oh, okay, T.D. Steele. I see what happened. Uh, he was trying to make sure Sam Lowe was in there. The loser of the first fall has to start the second fall. And Sam Lowe is trying uh, not to start this one, but T.D. alertly said, uh-uh, back in here. Sam Lowe, whoa, way up in the air, dumped over to the back, and he immediately heads for the corner and makes the tag. And Tony Anthony, the dirty white boy. Tony Anthony says, take a break, Sam. Sam Lowe hanging onto his back out in the corner here. Downtown Bruno with a, a little massage, try to help him out. And meanwhile, in the ring, it is Brian of the New Kids. His first official appearance in the match, he leaps over Tony Anthony, goes to the rope, presses it down to the back. One, no, oh, no, just a one count. Boy, the new kids have really, really turned into a super tag team in a very short period of time. They looked good the first time we saw them on Championship Wrestling, which wasn't that long ago. And the fans just really took to them. And they have backed it up in the ring. There they are, both of them. Brian and Tony dump dirt Gilbert over the top. That's a count of one, two, whoop, only a two count. T.D. Steele right there started the count on time, but only a two. Doug Gilbert, a very tough customer to pin. He'll weigh in at about 260, and as tough as they come. Over to the corner of the tag made. Here is Cody Michaels coming in. Cody got this whole thing started for his team. He opened the match back in the first fall. He's back in there now against Dirty Doug Gilbert. Doug. Smack Cody Michaels turned to the corner. Tony Anthony, the dirty white boy, is in there. There's a tag made, and here comes Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn taking over from Cody Michaels. Oh, they double up on Tony Anthony. Snap that left arm. They make a tag. Here comes Tony from the new kids. Oh, they're working on that left arm. Tony Anthony pulled his hair, yanked Tony back to the ropes. Tony goes by. Tony Anthony picks him up and drops him on the mat. Tony from the new kid. Getting back on his feet as dirty white boy Tony Anthony makes the tag on dirty Doug Gilbert. Gilbert just hit him with a fist, had that right hand doubled up. Head slammed into the turnbuckle. Glad to have you with us today on USWA Championship Wrestling. Dave Brown here at ringside. We've got eight-man tag team action going. Well, they're doubling, double teaming here on Tony of the New Kids. The dirty white boy jumps in here. Doug Gilbert stayed in to hold him up. Tony Anthony, the dirty white boy, with a suplex. He had him up in the air a long time before he finally dropped him to the mat. Dirty white boy makes the tag. Here's Joseph Magliano. And they double team. Tony of the new kid. Having a rough couple of minutes here. Sam Lowe celebrating. His tag team's got things going their way. The Memphis Mafia, oh, Doug Gilbert using that top rope to choke Tony while the referee is trying to keep uh, Jerry Lynn back outside. Oh, boy, everybody getting into the act over here as uh, downtown Bruno is holding his foot from outside. Joseph Magliano climbing the rope. Oh, Tony moved out of the way. Magliano smashes his fist into the mat. Tony makes the tag. Here's Jerry Lynn back in. Look out. Everybody's in the ring, all eight of them. T.D. Steele looking like, hey, what do I do now? That's what I meant earlier when I said I don't envy the referee in this. Jerry Lynn slips around Joseph Magliano. His shoulders are down. T.D. Steele uh, not seeing it. Did not start to count. He was trying to get the order restored here. He's trying to get this head. Oh, now Magliano's got the shoulders down. There's a three count. 
the Memphis Mafia, but yeah, by whatever tactics, Joseph Magliano was able to get Jerry Lynn's shoulders down on the mat. T.D. Steele turned and saw that, started the count, got the count of three, and now they're trying to explain to uh, the referee what happened. I, I doubt it's going to be allowed, however, because what uh, the referee had to do is when he saw what was happening as he was trying to get order restored, he saw the shoulders down and made the count. So, second fall goes to the Memphis Mafia. It is now one fall apiece. We will take this break and be back with you very shortly. If you have just joined us today, let me fill you in on where we are. We're on at the special time uh, today from uh, 10 to 11.30 due to an NFL football game. Miami and Buffalo coming up immediately following us. Uh, those fans of you who uh, were just joining us at the regular time earlier today, the fabulous ones were in here with Jimmy Cornett. We were happy to see him. They had just won the uh, World Tag titles and all of that. They were in a non-title match. Well, I, I tell you, I won't go into the whole thing, but uh, uh, maybe we can show you part of that uh, again in just a few minutes and show you exactly what happened. But uh, it, it, it all begins to make sense. In short, what happened, they jumped Jerry Lawler out here, and, and uh, I was thinking about it uh, a few moments ago. And, and uh, Terry Funk, obviously, is the man who has, uh, has put, the, uh, put the bounty out. You know, Lawler denied he had done it. Eddie Gilbert said he didn't put the bounty out on Lawler and all of that. I'm not sure really believed especially Eddie Gilbert on that particular uh, thing, but uh, finally I uh, was convinced, and uh, sure enough, it now appears it was Terry Funk. Uh, uh, Jimmy Cornett uh, made the telephone call, hey, Terry, hey, Terry, I'm on long distance, I'm calling Terry. Uh, all of that sort of thing. So that's obviously when it was, and it does make sense when you consider that Eddie Gilbert was the number one contender for the World Bell, which Funk holds, and also Lawler's the number two contender. So they're in one fell swoop. Terry Funk doesn't have to do anything but put up the bounty and get rid of the number one and number two contenders just like that. So that seems to be the situation that's been going on. Let's uh, catch you up on action coming up Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. 7.30 is going to be uh, wrestling time. Special $2 admission for all students to general admission. 7.30 again is when it all begins. King Cobra will be going against Donnie Bass in the opening match of the night. Then it's going to be Chris Champion against Terry Garvin with downtown Bruno in Garvin's corner. Dirty white boy Tony Anthony will be going against Jerry Lynn. Then in a special lumberjack match, the rules will be special this time because there are going to be eight lumberjacks around the ring with straps. They are going to be fans. Danny Davis against Joseph Magliano. Danny Davis very happy about that. He is pretty well... Uh, uh, convinced that uh, that most of the fans are, are going to take it upon themselves to make sure that it's Joseph Magliano who does not run away from Danny Davis in this particular match. Primetime Brian Lee will be in. Downtown Bruno will be in his corner. He will be going against Cody Michaels. Then, a one-night tournament to crown a new Southern Heavyweight Champion. Uh, Eddie Marlin made the announcement uh, at the beginning of the program today that he had received a call from Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. Eddie Gilbert had said... I am out of here. I am not going to wrestle in the USWA anymore. I'm leaving right now, and that is it. Well, we got the explanation from the fabulous ones how they threatened Eddie Gilbert, and he left. They uh, didn't claim that they uh, collected that bounty, too. So uh, at any rate, Eddie Gilbert is gone. Uh, the belt uh, then uh, is uh, subject to a new champion, and this one-night tournament Monday night will crown a new Southern Heavyweight Champion. There will be 11 matches in all. Uh, the only first-round pairing that I know about, Jeff Jarrett, was scheduled against Doug Gilbert. There will be other first-round pairings, and then there will be eliminations until finally the Southern Heavyweight Champion is crowned Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. Then, special added grudge match, added because of what happened here a little bit earlier today. Uh, Jerry Lawler has uh, been in contact, obviously, with Bill Dundee and uh, signed Bill as his partner, and he will have a partner against Stan and Steve, the fabulous ones, with Jimmy Cornette in their corner. People who were supposed to be here to watch Jerry Lawler's back end up turning on him. Lawler and Dundee against the fabulous one. 7.30 is when it all begins Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. And again, it all begins to make sense as Terry Funk, uh, Funk feels that he has eliminated the number one and number two contenders all in one fell swoop with the fabulous one Stan and Steve coming in here. Take a special look at the superstar right now. Here is Bill Dundee. <laughs> Yeah. 
Uh, here, well, here comes Jerry right here. Jerry Lawler looking much better than he did when he was hauled out of here just a few minutes ago after what just happened you saw right there. King? Hey, let me just say this right now. As you can see, Cornette, if you're still in the building, you and the fabulous ones, the king is still here, and I'm still alive, and I'm still kicking. So you're going to have to wait a while before you collect any of that money that obviously is so dear to your heart. Now, it seems that money will make people do strange things, and obviously, the fabulous ones are no exception. I really could have expected it from a low-life, stinking slime ball like Jimmy Cornette, because that's all he's ever been, that's all he ever will be. But I didn't expect it from somebody like Stan Lane and Steve Kern, because I do know, I do know Jackie Fargo better than they know him, and I thought at least that that was one thing that Jackie would have instilled into these guys, was a little pride, a little decency, and a little honor. But obviously, you guys have been around Cornette long enough that all of that's out the window. You've forgotten all of that. Well, let me tell you something. You're looking at somebody right now that can do a little reminding. I can show you two jerks what pride and decency and honor is all about. And Jimmy Cornette, come on, boy. You try as hard as you can to collect all the money that Terry Funk has got. Because I promise you this. When me and Bill Dundee get our hands on the three of you down there, I promise you, there's going to be, and I'm sorry to say this, but I've said it before and I'm going to say it again, there's going to be hell to pay, and you're looking at the man you're going to pay it to. man who can pull out all the stops, and it sounds like he is ready to do it when they show up there, as he and his partner will be going against Stan and Steve, the fabulous ones, and Jimmy Cornette and that stupid tennis racket, too. We'll be back in a moment. Well, you saw what happened here uh, today, earlier, as uh, the Fabulous Ones and uh, Jimmy Cornette attacked Jerry Lawler. Jerry Lawler and Bill Dundee, though, have all teamed up. And Monday night, 7.30 at the Mid-South Coliseum, the special added grudge match will be the main event there that night. And uh, got to tell you, I suspect Jerry Lawler is going to come in, as we said, ready to pull all the stops and uh, be ready to go as he and Dundee step through the ropes against him. It's student night, $2 uh, admission for students to general admission. And that's all 7.30 Monday night at the Mid-South. Coliseum. We hope you'll be joining us here next week. Next week, I'm pretty sure we'll be back at our regular time of 11 o'clock. Thanks for joining us early today. Remember, NFL football is coming up immediately. Till next week, Dave Brown. So long, everybody. The announcers on this program are...